Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the Jade Gemini. This evening I'm super excited to bring you a review of this guy right here. This is the Vastid. Eh, silly, it's another clip. The Vastid. There you go. <laughs> Ray Light Rook. And that took a while, sorry. And um, today we are going to take a look at what I love, what I'm sorry, like, what I love, what I dislike, and if it applies, what is rubbish about this guy right here. Before we jump in though, let's get some size comparisons out of the way. First, we'll go ahead and compare it to a knife that everyone knows and is either probably held or owns themselves and that is the Benchmade bug out here. So as you can see here, it gives you an idea of the length, both open as well as well closed. Now if you're not into EDC and pocket knives, or you don't live in a place where you can have a locking folded pocket knife, but you are a flashlight enthusiast, that's what we will show next. So this is the beloved by me and many others, the Workos TS10. This was flashlight of the year for me last year. So this gives an overall size here. And as well, we will have the Sofren SC18. This is a good size comparison of your sort of standard 18650 light, your sort of baton, you know, S2R Baton 2, um, or, you know, Baton 3 Pro, as I guess what they call it now, and um, different things like that. Uh, that is a um, good representation of size. And then comparing these two, more specifically, since I do think that these guys are kind of competitors, you have the overall head size. as well as the tail length. So, with that, that, with that all out of the way, let's jump right in. So, the first thing that I like about this light is the pocket clip that is on here, to a point. But I do like this uh, pocket clip, one, just the way it is designed, and it is kind of unique. It is also a standardized pocket clip in the flashlight world. Um, there are steel flame clips that are designed and made for multiple lights, and this takes that sort of standardized size. So whether you want to get a deep carry version of this, which is probably made, or you want to get a steel flame, super Gucci, really expensive, you know, sort of clip, or something like that with a skull or a big cross on it or something you could really go mild or wild but even as a clip by itself it's good it has a lot of retention um, it is wide in the pocket and it definitely retains the light well so that's the first thing to like the next thing to like a lot about this is actually the finishing this anodization is done very very well it matches both the um, head as well as the body of the light itself. And it's been pretty durable. I accidentally dropped it out from a um, shirt pocket. I was just throwing it in there, bent over, forgot. It slapped on the floor and it just barely scuffed up there. But, you know, it's little, hit little things here and there, little metal things, and, you know, um, things like that. And I, and I don't see any wear or scuffs anywhere on this thing. So that's something else to really enjoy. The next thing that I do like about this light personally, and I know some people don't, is actually the button system, the way that it works. This is a proprietary thing, or at least something that is through all the ray lights. There may be other lights that have a similar or identical system, but at least with ray lights, they're all the same. So the way that this works is you click the clicky on, and it makes a very nice sound, something else that is very enjoyable. Very nice sound. 
compared to something like this middle button that's just a little bit more silent. So you have the audible as well as the tactile feel of it going on so you know, even if you're not necessarily looking at it, you're distracted, you have that. Now the way it works is once it's on, it's on. You half press or soft press and let go to select through your modes. So really super easy to pick up and it gets you right into the action. No sort of like tap, 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 and then click in. You just click on it, it's on, and then you just do your mode selecting from there. Something to like a lot. Another thing that I do like a lot about this light that is big plus is that this actually comes with a turbo glow. Um, I wouldn't say that I love it because it doesn't last all through the night, but I definitely think it is a premium and really, really nice feature for sure. Um, when you basically turn this on and you sit it on the table in the middle of the night, you look over to go to the bathroom or if you forgot something um, or, you know, it's morning time and you're getting ready, you can just grab this off of the table, be able to be good to go because it's sitting there once your eyes are fully adjusted and you can see it. Now, it doesn't last as long as something like the Lumen this, right? Uh, but it is going to still work at least through a day. But I have found after that day, if this is not carried, then what will happen is, is it will completely die out. It won't like retain some sort of loom at all the times, like some, um, you know, luminescent glow-in-the-dark material works. So something to keep in mind. Maybe why I didn't put it on the love it list, but still really, really great. The next thing that I do like is that this uses sort of an up and coming, more popularized battery. Sometimes batteries can be a little bit strange with what they're used. Um, this one actually uses a um, 18350 battery. So more recent here, the um, CR 123s or RCR 123s of yesteryear, I think were really popular because military things like optics and lights, you know, ended up using that. But I think that those batteries don't retain as many milliamp hours and, you know, overall lasting. So the 18 series of batteries, which is the exact same diameter that you will find in this guy, see, same family but just a shorter version lengthwise, 650. This is the 350 series, right? So this is very similar, a little bit bigger than the CR123. So you can still get lights in that sort of comfortable size range. And I think that this is becoming more and more standardized. There's even more lights that'll take a CR123 as well as an 18350 and sort of swap behind between the two. So the likelihood, if you are an enthusiast and you do have this light, the likelihood that you are going to have another light that has this size, which I happen to, right, with my little thrower um, workos that I have, um, takes the exact same size battery. So that is at least if I'm going to have a more specific battery size, it isn't 14500, right? It isn't a AA compatible or something like that, but at the same point, it is a more common battery if you're an enthusiast. Another thing too, like is the fact that this battery is rechargeable right out of the box. So no need to have a cradle or anything like that. It has smart circuitry protected on the inside. So you simply plug it in and you can see that the head here on the positive side has a little LED on the inside, kind of interestingly enough. And then I believe that that either turns off or turns green, but there's a clear indication that it is done and it generally doesn't take too long to charge. It's not like an all day thing. It's about like three hours, maybe two hours and it's fully done. So something else to like. The other thing while we're at it and we have the light open too, like is the fact that this light does have dual springs on the circuit board. So that's a big deal because if you drop this light, like I said I did, instead of this battery and the weight of it being free floating, 
and slamming into the head of the circuit board, it actually has a spring that pushes down and shock absorbs and moves the battery back and forth until it becomes, it comes at a rested state again after a drop, making the likelihood of the circuitry of this light being damaged lessened and making this overall a tougher package. I also like the fact that this light is kind of sealed up. You really can't get this tail off, um, at least not easily. It seems to maybe be Loctited, which for some they might not like that, but for me I like it because there's just really one entry point, one O ring to really have to worry about as long as you keep the others, you know, completely sealed up. So, another thing to like. So, these are all the things that I do like about the light. Overall, I like the switch, the way it sounds, and the way it operates. The pocket clip is good, even though it's pretty standard, there's no problems there. The fit and finish is really great on this. Overall, the anodization seems to be tough. Um, and like I said, things seem to basically align. Um, really nice. And then of course, the rechargeable battery that is a little bit more of a common size, although it still is not super common in household appliances. If you have other flashlights, you'll be fine. And if you don't, they're readily available and you can charge this battery with a standard USB type C and a protection so there's nothing going to happen with the light so a lot of good there what i love about this light is um well it's practically the most perfect light i've ever held or owned in my entire life so that's something that's cool right <laughs> now that's a big statement but there's a lot that goes into that the first thing that i love uh, most of all is um just these gorgeous absolutely beautiful absolute suave absolute luxurious i mean all the words right so weird unless you are a flashlight enthusiast and then you, you get it right but this has my favorite brand and favorite model of led this is a um or emitters but same thing uh, this is a nichia 519a this is their new model it hasn't it's actually been out for a while now but it's newer than the 219 it's more thermally efficient and it's also more powerful, um, but it still has their gorgeous high CRI and rosy tint to it. So it's an absolute joy to use. It doesn't hurt or sting your eyes. I am always like, oh, what a privilege to use this light. It's so pretty, so gorgeous with its, you know, color reproduction, so on and so forth. Now to show you a difference between the two, I have a high CRI 4000K, which this is as well, LEDs in here. But these are sort of a no-name LED. These are a, like I said, 4000K, but this just feels a little bit more rosy. Well, this is a, just a little bit more flat, right, when you're using it. And what that comes off is a little bit more yellow because there is more green tint in this light. Now, green tint to a point can start to even become gross. Uh, I really wanted to get, for example, an Olight um, Baton 3 Pro in the neutral white and ended up sending it back because it was so green. It was practically just a green light. And so on the tint scale, you have the green on one side and then you have perfectly neutral in the middle um, and then you have on the other side this rosy color, a more red hue instead of a green hue. And um, to at least me and a lot of others, this comes off as a very easy to the eyes, very appeasing, very pretty. But it's not just about all the looks here. You also get mega performance out of this light, which is the next thing that I do love about this. This uh, light, I think, comes in an XPL. Um, which is a Cree that is more powerful. It might be a Samsung emitter, but either way, it's a more powerful emitter than the Nichia, right? Um, and I think with that, though, you don't get the same CRI, and you get the likelihood of things being more green. I would rather have with this and still get a lot of performance out of the light than Nichia with the nice color reproduction and the rosy tint and still plenty of light. The next thing that we'll go ahead and talk about, which is probably my 
other favorite thing about the light is just the flood. Now for me, I didn't think I was a big fan of a TIR style optic because as of this point, all the TIRs that I've had have, I've always thought that there was a potential to have something that was really floody and sort of diffused and frosted, but what always has ended up happening is, is it makes it where a uh, reflector, sorry, will have a defined hotspot and then a solid edge and then another defined outside of that edge um, flood. And what that would do is that would make it really easy for my eyes to pinpoint what the distinction is and be able to guide my way. The problem that I've found, I mean, naturally with like a more throwy like this, that has a small hot spot, you can see a little bit of green and a little bit of blue there, instead of this rosy color again. You can really see the difference here, but this is also like a 6,000K, but still there's some green, some blue. But that's not the point. The point here is the um, hot spot. Real small and sort of slightly fuzzy with this TIR that's in here. And then a sort of slowly fading to, you know, gradient of less light and less light and less light until nothingness is what I usually see with TIRs. With a reflector, it is a full, opaque, or at least the same, you know, across the board with the hotspot, and then basically the same with the defined hotspot around. And then the only difference is there could be some intrusions in that um, flood if the lens and reflector is not, and the emitter height and everything isn't perfectly aligned. You could possibly see obstacles um, in the actual reflector, but most of the point, it is a quite bit nicer. This is probably the nicest that I've had with a um, TIR, is I had a more small focused hotspot and then it sort of flooded on the outside and then kind of went into somewhat of a flood, but it wasn't like a secondary flood that you could see. With this, this is finally what I've been wanting, long and short of it. This is huge. As you can tell, these side by side, there is much more light and flood than this. What this does is this makes a big wall of flood that you can use. So instead of you having to, like with this light, having to pinpoint and direct exactly what you wanted to see, what object you wanted to identify with the um, workos here, it's a situation with this instead that you can just sort of point it in the direction of what you want to see and there is a huge wall of flood so you don't exactly have to be concentrated and pointed on what you are looking at. You can have it in the general direction and easily be able to, you know, get on target, use the light for close range, medium range, whatever have you, day-to-day -day task. Okay, so we're out here and we're checking out the Rook. And I wanna show you exactly what makes it so special with its um, flood. Gotta also remember not to talk like Grand Thumb. I've started talking like Grand Thumb at my work and my stats went way up. But now, sometimes I'll find myself talking like Grand Thumb on accident. So anyways, um, we're gonna do some comparisons, right? So this first one is a um, sort of tactical-ish, you know, um, more spot driven. So as you can see, you got a tight little spot here and a little bit of flood to the left and right. Oh my gosh, it's starting to possibly rain or maybe that's just the wind. Okay, so that's the first one. That's a little bit more on the throwy side. The next one is a um, 90 degree headlamp. So, and it has a diffused honeycomb lens. So this naturally is going to be a little bit more floody, right? So you definitely got some out in front of you, definitely a bigger flood. Um, but the main issue that I find is, is that it's just flood and then it immediately, like there's a micro secondary spill. Um, the hot spot is the flood itself and then it immediately is gone. You see nothing on its side. With the Rook, the, the Vosteed Rook, um, you get a situation where it is perfect because it is 
mega floody, way more floody than the other one here from left to right. And then you still get a, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm, I'm pointing it at this direction. You can already start to see, you also get a sort of immediate burst out of flood and that's big. It's way more apparent, but you get the idea way more apparent on film, but still what that does is when you're using this light, what I'm seeing is more so like this. Um, and even that's a little extreme, but again, it's still going to guide your way if you look down or look left or right a lot better than again, if we switch back to the headlamp, it is smaller and it is not as well or noticeable at least of that secondary flood. So it's a, um, it's a lot smaller hotspot and it, you can barely tell any flood is there. So it's quite incredible that you have this EDC style everyday carry light that also um, with the Rook, right, that has so much flood, has the low moonlight, but then has so much power. So much power. I mean, I am illuminating the whole backyard here. I can also see up. I can also see down, left, and right. It is amazing, right? So if you're walking down a path, you're looking at a property, right? I'm looking at the back of the yard from where my house is, right? If I heard a bump in the night or something, I would be able to illuminate everything and be able to see it. Of course, it's not as long range as a throwy light, but it is still extremely usable light. And so um, this is perfection. Yeah. All right, I'm back. So as you can see a little bit more in the field, right? Um, you can actually see that there is quite a bit more flood um, and still plenty of power to illuminate a full distance, um, you know, completely usable. Um, as far as the actual light itself, the other thing that I do love so much, especially this is a big deal for this being a ray light engineered light, um, I do love this design, by the way. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it, but this overall size, carryability for the EDC, I get the whole, you know, cust all the custom flashlights with the tri emitters and the, um, you know, 18350 size that are with that are so popular. All the custom lights of this size, it carries perfect. It's a little bit more beefy but you definitely get a lot more light continuously, a lot more light power than this small light that gets more hot. To that point, the performance on this is great, like I was saying, because it is a ray light. And in the past, I mean, with like their mini pineapple, for example, you would have a situation that you would click it on the turbo and it was more like an emergency. It would kick down and you would not get enough light from 250 down to like 70 lumens or 60 lumens or something like that. With this, this is no problem. You get still your gorgeous moonlight that is, you know, basically enough where you have to be in a dark room or you have to have fully adjusted eyes. So it is a good moonlight, right? Um, so really do love that. The next level is really great for indoors. It definitely, indoors, it definitely kicks it up a notch, right? I'd probably say you're looking anywhere between 15 to 25 lumens, but with the high CRI, no blue, no green, it's really nice on the eyes, really doesn't bother you if you're coming out of the dark and you know you sort of get used to the one light and then you sort of step into an okay lit room and then you kick that on. I'll actually use this mode to illuminate my um, kitchen when I first get up so I don't have to completely illuminate the whole house, but I still have enough light control in just the room that I'm in. So I absolutely love that. Then the next thing is the medium mode. This is probably about 200 to 300-ish lumens, somewhere in there. And this um, gets a little warm. Um, the, the you know low mode, right, does not get warm. This definitely gets a little bit warm, but it just stays there. It I haven't had it ever kick down, and this is plenty of light to be able to guide you around fully outside, be able to, you know, again, see where my dogs are, see what's going on in my yard, 
have no problems whatsoever with plenty of brightness. And then the turbo is really bright. It feels kind of like a miniaturized version with the flood and the way the power is used. It feels like a miniaturized version of a Coke can light. That sort of massive amount of flood, that wall of light, is what you're going ahead and get in. And I've never had a light this small that's actually like not like comical, like, oh, it's bright for a second, but then it dies down, like actually usable, actually getting some flood because there is a lot of power or distance because there is a lot of power there. Keeping that that level of power for that long. Um uh, just fantastic, right? And that's what I'm saying. It's like the best light I've ever had. You have the temperature, the performance, the design. Mm. The other thing, I do love the UI system here. Not only do I love the aberration, I found that even though I like Andrew and it's fun to have the infinitely ramping system, you can make the argument that you get enough light that you need and nothing that you don't. However, what I find is I'd rather make sure it's simple instead of, oh, I kind of miss it. Oh, I think it's maybe too bright. Maybe I should kind of bring it down a little bit. Blah, blah, blah. I like it a lot more where it's like, I just have these options. I know these are the options, period. But the great thing about the system that Raylight runs is the fact that it is customizable. So if you flip through the light eight times, it will start doing this, blinking, two blinks, Three blinks, and basically, if you read the manual, what this means is that the um, light itself is going through customization mode. So one of those modes is that you can. Um, geez, this thing is really just keeps going, doesn't it? <laughs> Crazy, uh, but anyways, one of the modes itself is that the light can uh, turn off and on moonlight mode if you don't want it. Um, another option is that you can. Um, customize instead of it being low, medium, high, it will be high, medium, low. You can also customize percentages so you can have higher, lower outputs. Like instead of it being one percent, or you know, moonlight, and then like two percent of the light, and then like twenty percent of the light, and then like a hundred percent, it can be like, you know, moonlight, and then ten percent, and then like. 50% and then 100%, right? Or you could have one that's like, you know, less, less, and then 50% on the high, and then you actually have to double tap into turbo, which is also an option. If you click it on and just do two taps, you do get instant turbo, which is something that is cool. But it is in practice, but it is has a little problems, which we will talk about. Um, and then there's, you know, other modes, again, like SOS and stuff like that. So a really cool feature for sure with the light itself. Um, so the things that, these are all different things that I love, you know, customizable UI, clicky button, well fit and finish, you know, again, just the looks overall. Sorry, we're just resetting the light just in case I accidentally turn something on or customize it away, I didn't like it. But anyways, um, like I was saying, lots to love here with the performance, you know, just an absolute banger. Now, like anything, this is not perfect. And there are some things to dislike about this light. The first thing is um, the problem that basically any ray lights can kind of uh, run into. And this one's definitely a lot better than any of the other ones I've had. Uh, but if that is the clicky button. This so sort of soft and squishy button and of course it's gonna act really nice now, right? It is a finicky system. Um, because of the way that it works, if you turn it on and you're too slow, I, it, it can go back, as you saw, it went from moonlight to low and then back to moonlight. Um, and if you go too fast, you, it will double tap on turbo, or sometimes it'll just like, be like low, medium, and then moonlight again, or you know, uh, moonlight, low, medium, and then you're trying to get the high and it'll be moonlight again. It's gotten a lot better because it's a lot more firm of a button. And if you just sort of pace yourself, you get it every time, no problem. So that is something to like, it has definitely improved, but just this system in general is, I think always going to be a little finicky. Um, if you just pace yourself, slow down, 
I don't think this is supposed to be a fast reaction tactical flashlight. You know, this isn't that. This is definitely more of a user, everyday carry, natural, you know, sort of thing. You know, you could use it maybe for some, you know, little outdoor, you know, sort of stuff. Uh, but for the most part, I, I think it definitely suits best in the role of just an everyday carry, does most of everything well, um, you know, sort of flashlight. The next thing that um, could be to dislike, and I'm usually a real stickler, stickler about alignment and stuff, I've sent back, you know, watches, not this one, this one's perfect, but watches with like misaligned hands, right? It definitely a misaligned chapter ring or a bezel insert. Uh, but essentially the alignment here is a separate piece from this body, this cap or tail cap and um, this head. And so as you can see, this is slightly out of alignment with the rook that is printed here. So there could be even ones that are maybe like, this is here, and the, or these are here, and this is here. So again, that's something to possibly dislike. I also do kind of dislike how they've hidden the ray light and the Vosti. Some people might like that. They might not like branding, branding too much. Um, you know, so it might be something that they dislike. Um, also, there's like three different fonts here which I don't care about at all, but some, I've had people mention that they do not like that. So something else to keep in mind as well. One thing I did forget to say that I love, I'm so sorry, is that this does have so many options for tritium. I love tritium, freak for it. So you can install different types of tritium on this. Uh, but no, back to usually what we were saying. Um, the next thing to dislike, um, a little bit more for sure, um, is the fact that when I got this light, it really sort of concerned me that the way that the circuitry in here is not aligned quite right. Um, if I can actually illuminate this a little better, I think it'll help. Basically, this collar here, there's a brass collar on a co inside of a copper collar, and then there's a silver contact point that actually completes the circuit from battery to body to, you know, um, battery to body into the circuit itself, right? And so essentially this circuit, this red circuit in here is not perfectly aligned. So like on one side, the circuit is starting to kind of be pushed on by the uh, brass ring that you can see there. And then on the other side, there's this, you can see it better there, there's this big silver gap. So it's kind of like that wasn't perfectly aligned. Now this has presented no problems and I can't see like the seal being incorrect in any way on the top, but it is something to just keep in mind, I guess, um, that I do feel like that could have been done better or maybe like the tolerances be right where it drops in very tight and when you tighten it down there's so little movement that you yourself really couldn't you know tell from the naked eye and that's something that definitely sticks out and you know is slightly concerning like what if you drop that and it moved again it's been a solid light so I'm less concerned of it now than I was but just something to keep in mind the only other thing that I would say um, and this actually does go under the rubbish category. Um, again, I'm trying to, this is a little nitpicky, but again, this is, I think, important. Um, it's the fact that with this pocket clip, I've got this thing tightened down very tight. Um, this is an aluminum body, and it's screwing in to aluminum itself, which is already something I don't love, to be honest. But what happens is, is that this is like slick under here, slick anodized and it's a polished stone wash clip. And what happens is, is you can easily, I mean, it's definitely harder than it was, but you can push, if you push hard enough, left or right on this pocket clip and it move. I'm intentionally not moving it now, but I could just and it move right over and it move over the other way. So I tried to tighten this down more and then it got to the point where this is aluminum and this is steel and I'm uncomfortable that I'm going to strip this out. I'm going to stop. This is probably tight enough and yet it still does it. Um, and I'm already to a point where I'm like almost slightly getting uncomfortable with how tight and I had to tight I had to get it. Um, if it's even a little less loose, it will easily move back and forth, which is something I just don't like. I 
you know, my pocket knives, I don't like the clips to move left and right. Um, you know, same thing with the flashlights. I like it where, you know, this stuff is tight, you know, and it doesn't really move, right? Uh, and this is a little bit more understandable if this slides, right? But these are bolts, right? This should hold it into place. And unfortunately, it, it just doesn't. Um, again, it's not the end of any worlds, uh, but to be fair, it is something that bothers me. And, um, you know, if you were like things to be perfectly aligned and symmetrical or, you know, you're afraid that this is going to loosen up over time or something like that, um, something to keep in mind for sure. And so um, overall with this light, um, it's absolutely incredible, right? The fact that you do get all these things, there might be little misalignments here and there or maybe a, a clip that moves a little bit or... You know, again, still the ray light button or, or, you know, again, the circuit board slightly being misaligned. But these are real nitpicky things. The real stuff that's here, the magic is here. And that's the great thing about getting something from ray light. The way that the light is constantly improved and it is actually customized and tuned by somebody who knows what they're doing. And not just a company taking a default car clow um, lens and then just putting an emitter behind it and putting in a body and then it coming up with some sort of version of a you know an image you know that you get a, a sort of result of the um, flood pattern this is like properly tuned and dialed and everything in where you're getting something that is more than the sum of its parts you're getting something that feels very special and very premium and the greatest part is you're getting this for under a hundred dollars even under eight eighty dollars right this isn't a cheap light right you can get lights that are great for that will do the job and be reliable for thirty dollars even cheaper right fifty dollars you know get some really nice lights this is definitely up there but i think with a design with a name behind it that somebody who knows that's been doing this who has high respect in the industry that has a custom ui right that has the features like the you know the afterglow and the tritium and you know the, the pocket clip option where you can customize and just the feel and you know also this is ergonomic which i do like you can sort of pinch grab it here grab it like this this also is like a nice place where it sort of fits in here ergonomically and you sort of have indication places on your fingers to hold, right? Something else to like. Um, and then the last thing, I'm so sorry, when you tail stand this, because they have these four little pads, this is like the most stable tail stand that I've ever had. Even this was kind of like, okay, it's stable, right? But this almost feels like a pyramid, the way it like just sits down. Don't know why, but I've felt this is always really stable to tail stand. Silly, but, you know, something I'd call out since I do see it. Overall, I know this went a little bit longer than normal, but this is absolutely an amazing light. I wish I could convey more just how impressed, other than the fact of me saying I've had this in my pocket from the day I've got it, and I've carried this maybe one day, and then this went back in the pocket for like another 14 days before like one thing got in there for half a day, and then I put this back in. This has been dominating. This has been kind of a... Uh, flashlight enthusiast hobby killer because it's been so good it's kind of like what else do i need it's perfect like what else you know what i mean it's just like it hits every single box so unless you're just trying to get premium materials like titanium or zirconium or something it it gives you that premium level high-end performance like what else do you need from an everyday light and i think that's the biggest um you know sort of compliment that i can give it is it's just like perfect for actual edc um and it's just an absolute dominator of you know hobbyist as well as usability and everyday and tool so if you're thinking about this light and you haven't picked one up please do yourself a favor and get one you will thank yourself for doing that um, of course most importantly i hope everybody has a great rest of your week, has a great weekend coming up. I appreciate you taking time and watching this video. There's so many amazing channels out there you could be watching. You've clicked on my little video. I also have a big favor to ask. If you do like this video and you are a subscriber or you like this sort of content, 
not only subscribe as it does help and we're always trying to grow, but please check out my Instagram actually. Um, it's something that I'm trying to grow and the reason for that is is that I might have 2,000 subscribers, which I am ever grateful for, uh, but at the same point, companies don't know who I am. They don't know that I exist. Uh, but if, you know, a thousand of you or 1,500 of you, right, um, like my Instagram, Civivi and um, Raylight and, you know, Ace Beam and Benchmade maybe and companies like that are going to know, hey, what's this? Why is this person? Oh, they have a YouTube channel. Oh, hey, they have this. It's going to give those opportunities for me to do why I created this channel, which is just to enjoy my hobby and get more opportunities to review different types of gear. So I think that's the next chapter that's going to make our channel explode and be able to boom up to that next level. So it's a big ask. It feels even really awkward for me to do it, but it would really, really help out, and I, I would appreciate that. Um, of course, more than important, like I said, everybody have a great rest of your week. Have any questions, please leave them below. Take care. Peace.